If you're serious about gardening, you should be serious about the weather and what it's doing to your garden. It's a good idea to learn more about the weather, like on this cold, foggy autumn day in my garden. So join me today as I set up a home weather station for my garden. Hi, I'm Gardener Scott, and this will be the location of my new garden weather station. Now, the setup of the actual weather device and the mounting is pretty simple. I'll show you all those steps. But the location that you choose to put it is really the most important factor. And this is something you should take a lot of time in figuring out. You need to take into account any structures that might interfere with the readings from the weather instruments. So I've placed mine in the middle of my garden where there really aren't any obstacles other than my house and my greenhouse. But I've situated the pole far enough away that they shouldn't be a factor. Even the trees that will be growing in my little mini orchard in the future are far enough away that they won't interfere with the placement of my weather station because you don't want anything to interfere with the weather readings of the instruments that will be at the top of this pole. Now this pole is about two meters tall. This is pretty standard. When you look at official climatological data, many weather stations mount their instruments about two meters tall. So that's what I chose. When you get the instruments up, you have less likelihood of interference from any low-lying plants, and you'll get more accurate readings, particularly of the wind, and then, of course, of the temperature. You also want a pretty stable platform. So I dug a two-foot deep hole, buried a five-foot long four-by-four, to which I attached this eight-foot long pole and with the two feet that are buried, it ends up being about six feet or two meters tall. With the support pole firmly mounted in the ground, now it's time to put the weather station together. There are a number of options available in selecting your home weather station. I found that the basic design of many of the brands is pretty similar, and the costs are also pretty similar, depending on what it is you want from your station. Now, in my high altitude Colorado garden, there are some specific things that I'm looking for when I'm going to track the weather in my garden. Temperature, of course, wind direction and wind speed are all high on the list and all weather stations will give you that. A barometer is nice and the measurement of rainfall is nice. And most of the brands will give you that as well. Because I'm at high altitude, I liked the idea of getting a UV index rating and also a measurement of solar radiation. And so that's why I went with this ambient weather brand Osprey model weather station. It's wireless and it's solar powered and it easily mounts to a pole. The user manual makes it look like it's going to be very easy to put together. So let's go ahead and take out all the components and assemble our weather station. The primary unit is already assembled, so all we're going to have to do is put on the wind vane, the wind cups, and the funnel for measuring the rainfall. We'll begin with the wind vane. Now the shaft for the wind vane has a flat side to it, and it corresponds to the inside of the wind vane. So we'll put these two pieces together and then tighten the set screw to hold it in place. We want to make sure that it's tight, doesn't lift off, and it moves freely. And we'll do the same basic thing now with the wind cups. There isn't a flat piece here. All we'll be doing now is just tightening the set screw 
and see that it spins freely as well. The rain gauge funnel is going to just screw on. We've got three clips that are going to fit into the three holes. We'll go ahead and line these up. And then once it's in place, we just turn it clockwise and that's all there is to the installation. This has a funnel coil filter. There's a little hook on here. So we're going to push this into the funnel until that little hook catches on the base. And those are all the working parts. Now there is a mount at the bottom for the U-bolt that will attach this to the post. Now we need to put in two AA batteries into the bottom of this. And a little light comes on. Close the battery compartment again. And this is all ready for mounting. But first, I want to synchronize the console and the weather unit to make sure that everything's working before I spend the time outdoors. We start by plugging it in. It's going to start its initialization and we can put in batteries at this point as well. Now that they're all in, go ahead and close the compartment door again. I'm going to get this silly piece of cloth underneath the door. And it looks like things are lining up. It's going through several minutes as the sensors synchronize with the display. I got the actual weather station about five to ten feet away as recommended. It looks like the synchronization has worked. We're getting a signal sent and it looks like all the readings are good. Of course we don't have a wind reading yet. That's because we haven't mounted it. So let's go do that now. Before mounting your weather station, make sure you look. On this model, it's on the top. There's an arrow pointing to north. So the rain funnel will be on the north side of the mounting. I've already got my compass. I know north is directly over there. So now I'm going to just go ahead and slide this onto the post and then start tightening the nuts on the bolt to hold it in place. Before I take the little wrench supplied with the kit, I want to make sure that it's perfectly level. Now when I put the post in, I made sure it was plumb. At this point, I can adjust the bolts so that I can get an exactly level weather station. This is important to get the most accurate readings. Looks level to me. So now I'll do the final tightening to make sure it is secured to the pole. With the weather station mounted, let's go in and make sure that it's synchronized and sending the signal to the console. It looks like everything is working well. It's sending the signal and now I'm starting to get a wind reading. There are a few more things to do to finish setting up the console, like the date and the time. But most importantly, I want to set up the Wi-Fi so that I can link it to my network and all of the data that's now being transmitted by the weather station to this console, I'll be able to track on my computer. The setup for linking to the ambient weather network was pretty simple. Now I can access all the information online and get a quick view of what's happening with the temperature, the speed, the rainfall, pressure, 
humidity and then compare my indoor outdoor temperatures and get all that solar information. I can also link this to my phone so I can get an idea of what's happening in my garden when I'm not even at home. For now, I need to play with this a little bit and check out some of the chart options, some of the graphs that the information will display and get a good idea of the best way that I can use this and interpret the data that I get from my weather station. One of the nice things about having a home weather station in your garden is that you know what the weather is like in your garden without even stepping outside the door. For years, I've been tracking the weather in my garden, but that's from the official climatological data from the weather station. That's a number of miles that way. And I've assumed that those numbers are close to the numbers in my garden. Now I'll know to include how much precipitation I'm getting. And of course, the wind and the temperature and the humidity and the UV and the solar radiation. I think this is a great option because now I can track for weeks, months, and even years into the future, the trends of the weather that's happening right here in my garden. I'm Gardener Scott. Enjoy gardening. Mm -hmm.